November 1872, Susan B. Anthony was one of 14 women who defied the law to cast a ballot in the presidential election. Anthony was arrested for, quote, knowingly voting without having a lawful right to vote. And on June 18, 1873, was found guilty. The next day, when her lawyer appealed the verdict, she addressed the court in response to a question from the judge, Ward Hunt. Has the prisoner anything to say why sentence shall not be pronounced? Yes, Your Honor. I have many things to say. For in your ordered verdict of guilty, you have trampled underfoot every vital principle of our government. My natural rights, my civil rights, my political rights, my judicial rights are all alike ignored. Robbed of the fundamental privilege of citizenship, I am degraded from the status of a citizen to that of a subject. And not only myself individually, but all of my sex are by your honor's verdict doomed to political subjection under this so-called Republican form of government. The court cannot listen to a rehearsal of arguments which the prisoner's counsel has already consumed three hours in presenting. <laughs> May it please your honor, I am not arguing the question, but simply stating the reasons why sentence cannot in justice be pronounced against me. Your denial of my citizen's right to vote is the denial of my right of consent as one of the governed, the denial of my right of representation as one of the taxed, the denial of my right to a trial by a jury of my peers as an offender against law, therefore the denial of my sacred right to life, liberty, property, and, and the court cannot allow the prisoner to go on. But your honor will not deny me this one and only poor privilege of protest against this high-handed outrage upon my citizens' rights. The court must insist the prisoner has been tried according to the established forms of law. Yes, your honor, but by forms of law all made by men interpreted by men, administered by men, in favor of men and against women. And hence, your honor's ordered verdict of guilty against a United States citizen for the exercise of the citizen's right to vote simply because that citizen was a woman and not a man. But yesterday, the same man-made forms of law declared it a crime, punishable with $1,000 fine and six months imprisonment to give a cup of cold water, a crust of bread, or a night shelter to a panting fugitive tracking his way to Canada. And every man or woman in whose veins coursed a drop of human sympathy violated that wicked law, reckless of consequences, and was justified in doing so. As then, the slaves who got their freedom had to take it over or under or through the unjust forms of law. Precisely so now must women take it to get right to a voice in this government. And I have taken mine and mean to take it at every opportunity. <laughs> the court must insist the sentence of the court is that you pay a fine of $100 and the costs of the prosecution. <laughs> May it please your honor I will never pay a dollar of your unjust penalty. All the stock in trade I possess is a debt.
debt of $10,000 incurred by publishing my paper, The Revolution, the sole object of which was to educate all women to do precisely as I have done. Rebel against your man-made, unjust, unconstitutional forms of law which tax, fine, imprison, and hang women while denying them the right of representation in the government. And I will work on with might and main to pay every dollar of that honest debt. But not a penny shall go to this unjust claim. And I shall earnestly and persistently continue to urge all women to the practical recognition of the old revolutionary maxim, resistance to tyranny is obedience to God.